Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the concept of ratios. Uh, hopefully this won't be brand new to you, but I'll tell you it was to me when I was in college. I'd never heard of such a thing and I grew up in a business. We never even talked about or thought about ratios. And uh, well, I think it's probably one of the more exciting and valuable parts of this course because it gives us um, some ways to compare our numbers against the numbers of our competitors and against ourselves from prior periods. Um, the problem is sometimes when we try to look at ourselves compared to our competitor, let's say we are the Kroger Corporation and we want to compare ourselves against our competitors and maybe we want to look at Walmart uh, who sells an awful lot of groceries, um, it would be very difficult to compare number for number an income statement from Walmart and an income statement from Kroger uh, because even though Kroger is big, Walmart is gargantuan. Okay, it would be difficult for us to compare um, our, our local bank here in town, our local credit union's numbers to Bank of a Million, I mean Bank of a Million, that's, that was a Freudian slip, uh, Bank of America or Chase Bank. Uh, both of those banks have like a, a trillion dollars in assets under management. Uh, so our, our little local credit union, uh, we couldn't really compare them. But with ratios, we can. And so I'll step you through some of the some of the well, I'll step you through all the ratios covered uh, in this chapter, and uh, and then maybe I'll, I'll try to make a little more sense about how they help us compare. So uh, these two chapters that we're covering right now are profitability ratios and leverage ratios. Um, so profitability ratios are just what it sounds like. These are ratios that measure uh, how profitable we are, and usually profitability means um, how well we're able to turn our sales into profits of some sort or another. Um, and then leverage refers to debt or how well we're using the money we're borrowing. Are we using it wisely? Uh, are we using it appropriately? So let me show you just how we calculate these ratios. They're in your book uh, and you'll have to do some assignments to teach you how to do it. Um, but uh, I'll go through the process here. So you see up on the screen I have the sample income statement and sample balance sheet. These are from your textbook. You can find them back in the appendix. And, uh, and then I've already kind of written out the profitability ratios that I'm going to look at, the gross profit margin percentage. And on down the line, you can read those. I won't read them to you. And the leverage ratios as well that are covered in this book. Um, there are more ratios than just these, but these are the most common ones. Uh, so this is a good starting point. So our gross profit margin percentage is defined as our, you know, what, per, I guess, not defined as, but we would say what percentage of our total sales uh, becomes gross profit. Uh, and so we can figure that out um, simply by dividing our gross profit by our total sales. So I'm going to do that here. I don't know how familiar all, you are, all of you are with Excel, but I'm just going to say this cell equals gross profit divided by sales. And that's going to come out to 0.22. I'm going to go ahead and tell, since these are percentages, I'm going to tell Excel I want these displayed as percentages. So 22.2%. So what does that mean? It means that 22.2% uh, of our sales is making it through to our gross profit. Uh, the, the remainder of that, the other 78.8%, uh, is being spent as part of our cost of goods sold. So this tells us how efficiently we convert sales of, in this case, 8,689, I think this is in millions, but uh, 8,689, into gross profit. And the answer is we, we, we do that at about 22% efficiency. Um, so the question always arises, well, is that good or is that bad? Uh, and that's where it depends because it depends on the nature of the business. In my business, I own a storage rental business. Uh, I have almost no cost of goods sold. Almost all of my expenses are fixed expenses like insurance and, and uh, uh, electricity and, and things like that, taxes. Um, so I would have a very high gross profit margin percentage, uh, even though my net profit may not be uh, any higher as a percentage uh, than than uh, than this business, so it's hard. That's why you have to compare your business against similar businesses, uh, and that's why it doesn't make sense a lot of times to compare your business against you know vastly different businesses. Uh, you want to find out what your competitors 
are doing. There's also something called industry standards where you can get these ratios calculated for uh, the average business, so a standard uh, for your business. And you can go online, there's some places you can do it, um, where you can um, you can say, hey, I'm a storage operator in a market of 50,000 or fewer people. I have revenues of under 100,000 a year. What are the industry standards? And, uh, and there are companies who put together these reports uh, and let you compare. And so maybe I'll, I'll walk you through a little bit of that a little later on. Anyway, so operating profit margin percentage. Uh, so operating profit is another name for our earnings before interest and, ta and taxes, or, or EBIT. So the operating profit margin percentage is simply our EBT, EBIT divided by our total sales. So again, I'll tell Excel this equals uh, earnings before interest and taxes divided by sales. So 7.5% of our sales is being converted into operating profit. Net profit margin, I bet you can guess how this works. It's the same thing. We're going to take our net profit of 248, divide that by our total sales, and it's 2.9%. So that means for every dollar this business sells, sample business, I guess would be their name, and for every dollar sample business sells, they are making 2.9 cents in profit. Again, is that good or is that bad? It depends on the nature of the business. Um, some businesses really focus on high volume and low net profit margins. Um, others are just the opposite. They do fairly low volume, um, but try to have very high profit margins. So again, without comparing it against a similar business, it's very hard for us to know uh, if this is good or if this is bad on its own. All right, the fourth one is return on assets. So return on always means our net profit divided by something. So return on assets is going to be our net profit divided by our assets. So we'll come right here. We'll say this equals our net profit divided by our total assets. Now we have to be careful over here on our balance sheet. We have two years represented. Since the, since the income statement is for the year ending December 31st, 2012, we want to use the balance sheet figures from 2012. Again, that's a percentage. So we have a 4.8% return on assets. What does that mean? It means that it's, it's a measure of how efficiently, even though these aren't called efficiency ratios or profitability ratios, but it's how efficiently we're using the assets we have to make a profit. That's what a business is trying to do, right? Why else have an asset if you're not trying to use that asset to make a profit? Uh, you know, Kroger or, or Walmart, they have buildings, they have inventory, they have all sorts of other assets, and they're trying to use those assets to turn a profit. So this business, sample business, they are having a return of assets, a return on assets of 4.8%. And then return on equity, remember equity represents the amount of the business that belongs to the shareholders, that would be the stock, the common stock they paid in, uh, plus any retained earnings. Uh, we calculate. Um, By our, as our net profit divided by our shareholder's equity. That's a piece of cake. Net profit divided by total shareholder equity. Again, that's a percentage. So for every dollar that belongs to the owners of the business, they're generating 10.1 cents in profit. Uh, again, the same question, is this good, is this bad? And the answer is it depends. Uh, we'd have to compare it against similar businesses. So let's say, for example, I went online. Let me just show you. And I searched for industry standards. I can find all sorts of places that do industry research. Um, I can find, here's the American National Standards Institute. 
Center Industry Standards. There's a whole bunch of them. Okay, so let's say I did that. I went online and I found one, and I and sometimes they give you info for free, but usually they'll give you some info for free and want you to pay for the rest. Um, anyway, so let's say I go online and I do that, and I find that the industry standard for a gross profit margin percentage is 32 percent. For operating profit margin is 0.85. I'm sorry, 0 0.085. And the net profit margin percent is 0 0.032. Return on assets is 0 0.055. And the return on equity is 0.123. So let's just say I did that. I would look at my profitability ratios here and I would say it's something's wrong with the way I'm running my business. In every measure, I'm below the industry standard. In order for me to make that sort of determination, I have to recognize a couple things. First of all, I have to recognize is lower better or higher better as it relates to these ratios. Um, and in these cases, profitability ratios in all of them, higher is better. The more profit I'm making relative to sales, uh, whether it be gross profit, operating profit, or net profit, and the more profit I'm making relative to assets or relative to equity, uh, the better. So if I find myself below the industry standard, then that leads me to ask myself, what can I do about this? And what does the rest of the industry know that I don't know? Or why is my business not performing as well? So that's the idea behind profitability ratios uh, and ratios in general. All right, so then the two leverage ratios that are covered in, uh, in the book our debt to equity and interest coverage ratio. So the debt to equity ratio is just what it sounds like, just from its name you can tell it's total debt or total liabilities divided by total equity. So I can figure that out. It is not usually expressed as a percentage but as a whole number. We'll say this is our total liabilities divided by our total shareholder equity. So in this case we get an answer of 1.113 uh, and then again, the question is, well, what does that mean? I want you to think about this. If you remember way back to when you learned about the, the fundamental accounting equation, you learned that assets equal liabilities plus equity. So the assets, and we see that on the balance sheet right here too, right? Our assets, our total assets equal our total liabilities plus our total equity. Um, so when we kind of compare our, our liabilities to our equity, it's kind of a way of saying, of all the assets that are in the business, how much of them belong to the bank or to someone else, that's our liabilities, and how much of those assets belong to us or the owners or shareholders uh, of the business. So when we look at debt to equity ratio, we can see a couple of things here. We have a debt to equity ratio of 1.11, which means that our debt or our total liabilities is higher than our total equity by a factor of 11%. That's the 0.11. If they were exactly even, we would have a debt to equity ratio of one. That would mean our liabilities equal our equity. If it was less than one, that would mean our liabilities are less than our equity. Um, so as you can imagine, in this case, typically speaking, lower is better. Uh, there are some times when you want to have a reasonable amount of debt, but typically lower is better. Uh, our, our liabilities relative to relative to our equity, we would like that to be lower than it is higher. We would like to have more of the business belong to us and less of it belong to our creditors. All right, and then the last one here is the interest coverage ratio. Uh, the interest coverage ratio is just a measure of how well we're able to cover uh, our interest. Uh, that was kind of dumb, wasn't it? That's kind of obvious from its name. Not so obvious is how we calculate it. Um, so the way we do this is, first of all, I don't think the, the number is on any of this. Oh, yeah, there's our interest expense. Um, they've been in the book, they put annual interest charges. Um, and that's misleading because our expense won't always equal our charges uh, if you think about uh, some of the deferrals and things we learned about before. But in, and for the purpose of this book, uh, we're going to say that, 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 that annual interest charges uh, equals our interest expense that we'll find on the income statement. So our interest, interest coverage ratio 
is going to be our operating profit. Remember, that's another word for earnings before interest and taxes. Divided by our interest expense or our annual interest charges. Again, this isn't typically expressed as a percentage, but rather as a, a whole, not a whole number, but a, um, you know, some number. Usually it's greater than one. Hopefully it's greater than one. So this ratio, we want to be positive, and we want it to be bigger rather than smaller. What this means is, remember, we use our, our operating profit, our EBIT, we use that to pay off our interest expense, to pay off our tax expense, and then hopefully have something left over as a net profit. Um, and so what, what we're saying is, how well can we cover our interest expense? And in this case, we're saying, look, our operating uh, income is 3.4 times greater than our interest expense. So if we had to, we could pay that interest expense three times over with that operating, 3.4 times over uh, with that amount of operating income. Uh, if that were lower, let's say it were 1, uh, then that would mean that our, our EBIT would equal our interest expense, which would mean we'd have no money to pay taxes and no money for profits. Uh, we'd have 0. Um, and if it were less than 1, it would mean that we were losing money. So there's the first uh, ratios kind of covered in the book, the profitability ratios and the leverage ratios. Hopefully this explanation helped you understand between that and reading the book. Uh, and, and, and even more important, I hope that as you kind of go through this, you start to think of ways you might actually be able to use this information in your jobs, in your day-to-day -day jobs, uh, to improve or strengthen um, the roles that you have. Um, anyway, I hope that's valuable to you. Uh, good luck this week, and uh, good luck uh, going forward in the course.